Today we're going to be getting our plants into their final pot size. We're also going to be getting our plants into the polytunnel, into the ground, into their final positions for the rest of the year. So join me in this glorious weather right after this. So before we get started with potting up and planting out, I just wanted to talk about a little something. Um, a lot of the time when we post things on social media or even on YouTube, we only talk about our successes and that sort of skews things a little in terms of what people's perceptions are of things. I'm not shy of talking about my failures. To be honest, I think that you learn a lot more from your failures than you do from your successes. But I just want to show you a little something where I have actually failed and that is with my overwintered plants. These are my overwintered plants and we can see they are not looking great. Um, you know, when it's like this, when it's really dry like this, they're not really going to come back. I would expect to see at least a little bit of growth coming off these stems, but I can't see anything. I thought I was seeing a little something on this, but it's not happening. And it's unfortunate, but these things happen. I think when I put them inside the small greenhouse, I didn't have any heater in there for the first little while. And there must have been a couple nights where the temperature dropped below zero. And when that happens, the roots will die and there's no coming back from that. Luckily, we have one plant that I have overwintered and that has been successful. That's the one I kept indoors. The roots never froze. So that one's actually doing all right. And a little bit later in the video, I'll show you how we're going to plant that out into the polytunnel. It's time for me to pot up and that means a lot of soil mixing and uh, a lot of work. I'm not going to be filming this whole bit because it would just make this take so much longer. And I've already done this in past years. I've also got my beginner's guide series if you want to see how I do these things. Uh, I'll leave a link up above. Uh, one thing I will point out is I'm making a small amendment to my soil mix this year. So if you've been following my videos and if you've seen my beginner's guide series, you would know my soil mix is roughly 10 parts good quality compost. I'm using my own compost. One part vermiculite, one part perlite. I use also one part fish blood and bone meal. And I'm also adding a small scoop of uh, Epsom salts. One addition I'm adding this year is some of my vermicompost, my worm compost. So if you haven't seen my videos on worm composting, there's a, again, another link up at top here. Uh, Vermi compost is amazing stuff, black gold. It is just so nutrient rich. So I'm adding one part of that as well. Anyway, I need to get to potting so I can start enjoying this beautiful weather uh, once I've finished doing all of this. So I'll be right back with you in a few hours, hopefully, but most likely this is going to take me about a day, day and a half. So the plants have been planted out and potted up. These are the ones in the polytunnel. They're in their final position now for the rest of the year. And I think it went pretty well. The weather is certainly warm enough for these to uh, start flourishing. Uh, we notice over here, these ones are the ones I put in a little bit early. So they're looking a bit sorry for themselves, but I'm pretty confident they will recover. There's already some new growth on them. Something I uh, figured out while I was doing this and uh, I didn't figure it out for for a while, unfortunately, I'd already gone and planted out all of these and I'd been digging up the holes with that small spade over there and putting all of these in individually. That was a bit of a pain on the knees and on the back and I'm feeling it today. However, when I woke up this morning nice and refreshed, I suddenly had an idea. Why not use that damn thing? So I bought that. That's a hole digger for, uh, well, I bought it for this polytunnel. Uh, the poles here, they go directly down. I bought that just to do the pole digging. Didn't think I'd be using them again, but <laughs> it actually worked damn well over here. So pretty happy with that. So I wanted to show you, this is the uh, mix that I'm putting at the bottom of the holes for each of these plants that I planted. Uh, it's quite a strong mix of nutrients. We've got bone meal in there. We've got some rabbit droppings those pellets you see these here rabbit droppings and chicken manure 
Uh, it's quite a rich mix that I just put a, a scoop full at the bottom of each hole just to encourage the roots to grow down. There's also some, uh, some Epsom salts in there and a few other little things. But that there is the scoop full at the bottom of each hole and that'll get the roots to go down a bit deeper and give them a good start. So there's one last plant to get inside the polytunnel and it's my overwintered ring of fire. So you can see it's not looking too healthy at the moment because I actually uh, forgot to water it for a week and a bit. But the leaves are coming back. I just gave it some water yesterday and just shows you how resilient these things are. All these little leaves coming back. I'll put a picture up on the screen to show what it actually looked like last night. I mean literally 12 hours later and it's recovered quite well. Anyway, let's get this inside the polytunnel, get it planted into the ground and see how it does. We're going to be putting in quite a bit of this compost in the bottom because it's been a, a winter without any extra soil or nutrients so really want to kickstart the roots again we can already see there's some peppers some fresh ones growing this is still the one from the beginning of the season. It is well dead, but these new ones that are coming through, and we'll have plenty more of those as well. So it'll be interesting to see how this plant progresses compared to the others, the, the ones that are planted this year. So we'll keep an eye on that. Let's take a look inside the greenhouse. So we can see the plants here are looking good. Some of them are a little leggy. So you can see this one over here. It is quite leggy, that's an IE Fantasy white, but I'm pretty confident that will bush out nicely. This pepper dew as well, it lost some leaves, that's why it's looking really leggy. But again, I didn't want to plant that too deep because you can see on the nodes over there, there's some new growth. But in the other plants, we're doing quite well. We can see here that we have some real good growth coming up on these. So if we look over there, you can see in between the nodes, there's a lot of new growth coming through. And then you've got a lot of these that are nice and squat. So this is a Maruga chocolate. These here are some of my hotter peppers. So we have the Marugla, we have a Maruga chocolate, we have a THSC chocolate scorpion, Fatali Gourmet Jigsaw, and good old Carolina Reaper. And this one here is a Peach Butchalokia. Down this end we have my peri peris. So I've got some peri peri over here. There's three plants of the peri peri. I think it's these three. So these three over here. And then some cayenne over here. Here we have some sweet peppers. So we have chocolate bell. We have a Bert the chili. Actually, I don't think Bert the chili is a sweet pepper. Uh, chocolate bell sweet banana and then we've got a couple lemon drops those definitely aren't sweet peppers over here these are my hydro and if you watched a very recent video you would recognize this thing over here this was inside under a, a light until about about four days ago but it's taken to proper sunlight very well it's it's grown since it's been out here quite a bit uh, it's branched out you can see this thing is probably got about a quarter extra height on it so it's doing well uh, it's plugged into my 12 volt system you can see over there 12 volt system is running this perfectly and obviously 12 volt running the hydro down there as well um, that's doing well I've had to make a few adjustments on the nutrients and the pH because you can see these leaves a little bit damaged but all the new growth is good so i think i've adjusted it just right it's just about keeping an eye on it and like i said in a previous video i'm not gonna give you too many tips and hints on how to do hydro just yet because i'm still learning myself once i 
feel more confident with it and comfortable with it and getting good results, then I will most certainly be giving you some tips and hints. And these are the last of the peppers that we've planted. Some of the smaller pots, I think these are seven or eight liter pots, these smaller ones, these larger ones, which the rest of them are the larger ones. So all of these others are the large pots. These are 12 or 12.5 liter. Um, so I have four of the smaller seven or eight liter pots and another four over there. Similar to what I did last year, just because I have eight of the uh, drippers that I can use here. So the only way I can fit eight plants on one of these trays is to have some of the smaller pots. So the large pots are on the outside, so we still have some large ones there. It does restrict the growth a little bit because this gets very busy here. So I've tried to put plants in here that won't try and take over, but we'll adjust as the season goes on. I can always move the plants, at least in the, in the beginning, until they get all tangled. Thankfully, it's been a long weekend here in the UK. Because of Easter, we get Friday and Monday off as well. So that meant I could really spend quite a bit of time uh, doing the potting up and uh, planting out, which was definitely needed because it took a bit longer than I expected, as it always does. I always think it's gonna take quicker than it does. But everything's done now, so that's good. And uh, the season's ready to properly kick off now. The plants in the polytunnel, uh, I'm going to keep an eye on them. It'll be interesting this season. This is the first time I'm using that polytunnel. And it's the first time I'm kind of growing chili peppers in this way, in the ground like they are. Uh, typically, I do them in pots, like you know, in my greenhouse. And I have grown in the ground before in South Africa, but that's a whole different story. Uh, much warmer weather and it's just, <laughs> it's a bit easier than trying to deal with the changing weather you get here in the UK. Anyway, I hope that your season is progressing nicely and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye-bye for now. Old man, old man,